Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone tuning in wherever you are, or for anyone watching a recording of this. Thank you for joining us for today's live online webinar, How to Paint Your Own Festive Cards with Rachel Eskandari, artist and author behind our newly released book, Watercolor Botanical Garden, A Modern Approach to Painting Bold Flowers, Plants, and Cacti. We're going to be getting started in just a few minutes. We have quite a few people registered, so we're going to give them some time to enter from the waiting room. So until then, relax, sit back, maybe get your brushes and palette ready to paint, and feel free to tell us in the chat where you're tuning in from and your name. Someone from Nevada, Arizona, Pennsylvania. Hello. Welcome, everyone. If you've just joined or you're here for our live online webinar, How to Paint Your Own Festive Cards, you've come to the right place. We're going to be getting started in just a minute. While we wait, um, waiting for folks to get settled, you can tell us where you're from in the chat and your name. Okay, it seems like most people have made their way in and we're going to get started. Um, we have some other participants who may be joining while we're in progress, but don't worry. If you come late or have to head out early, we will be emailing everyone who registered the recording of this video. Also, if you have any questions during the tutorial, please enter those in the Q&A um, and Rachel and I will get to those at the end of the webinar. So let's get started. My name is Katie Walker. I'm the marketing coordinator for Rocky Nook, and it is my pleasure to welcome you and host this webinar today. We have more than 100 people who registered. So for those of you who are new to Rocky Nook, we are a small independent publishing company founded in 2006 in Santa Barbara with the goal of helping photographers of all levels improve their skills to capture those moments that matter. Recently, we have taken our passion for creativity and of making finely crafted books and started applying it to other artistic endeavors, namely publishing books on drawing, painting, graphic design, crafts, and much more. We are so delighted to welcome Rachel as one of our newer authors and to publish and promote her brand new book, Watercolor Botanical Garden, which is available now and we will share a link to purchasing that um, from our website with, and we will supply a coupon code as well that you can apply at checkout. We ask that if you buy Rachel's book, that you leave her a review from whichever avenue you purchase from, as this helps both us, the publisher, and Rachel as the artist and author. And now to welcome Rachel. Rachel Eskandari is the artist and founder of Pink Puddle Studio, LLC. Her mural work has been televised on CNBC's Cashpad. Her work has been featured in HGTV Magazine, Phoenix New Times, Phoenix Home and Garden, Arizona Highways Magazine, and College Times. After receiving her Bachelor of Fine Arts in Painting at Arizona State University, she continued on a path towards a creative life by starting her own art business. She teaches students from all walks of life, both in person and through digital channels, and offers many guide booklets and watercolor kits. You can connect with Rachel on Instagram at Pink Puddle Studio. She lives in Mesa, Arizona. So please join me in welcoming Rachel. And Rachel, please take it away. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for being here today. So. Like Katie said, I'm going to walk you through a fun little webinar for you guys just to really promote the book and different things that you'll be able to learn from the book. Um, so this is kind of like a quick little glimpse into it. Um, my style is more of a loose, wet on wet style. And we're going to be demonstrating that through painting a festive card. So like this. 
Um, okay, so I'm going to switch my camera over so that you guys can see me painting. So just give me one second to do that. Okay, so now you can have a good visual. <clears throat> okay, so I know we gave you guys a materials list and it was just very loose and rough. So you kind of just use what you have. The one thing I do not recommend is computer paper, copy paper that will not work well with watercolor. So if you have bristle board, um, any kind of multimedia paper, if you have watercolor paper, which I recommend the most, then those are the best types to do this with because we are using water and copy paper, as you probably know, will make it very, very wonky once it dries or while you're painting. Okay, so just quickly, what I did was I, to quickly make a card, if, if you're still having trouble with that, pull this down a little, um, is I took, another sheet of paper, which was maybe like a nine by 12 or eight by 10, whatever size that you may have um, that you could create a card with. And I used my cutter, I have a paper cutter, or if you don't, you could use a ruler with scissors and a pencil. And basically I just made a 10 by five and then I just folded it in half so that you have a card. And then what I'm gonna do is now that I have kind of the middle worked out, I'm gonna flatten it again. That way it's easier to paint when it's flat like this, as opposed to like this when you're trying to paint. So I do recommend painting it flat, okay? Okay, so we're gonna do more of a uh, vertical painting uh, as opposed to like horizontal like this. So we're gonna do it more this way. So like she said, this was my book. So I'm gonna show you a little bit more about it later. But in it, you can see, all of these tutorials, um, as far as like brushwork and everything, that's in the book. Um, I talk about my loose type of painting. So if I'm a little bit, I'm gonna go a little bit quicker today only because we have a limited amount of time, but you can find all that information in my new book. Okay, so what I wanna do is I'll be using three different brushes today. Um, if you only have one, that's not an issue. I just like to use multiple that way I have like more of a detail brush. I have a brush that's a little bit smaller. This is a number four round brush and then a number six. And the reason I like to use multiple is because I can use more colors at once, which is nice. And I don't have to clean my brush as much. Um, if you only have one brush, that's, that's fine. Like you'll just have to clean your brush a little bit more. Um, and also with a round brush, you can get a good tip out of it. Um, you don't necessarily necessarily need like a very tiny one, but if you're starting out, I do highly recommend that you have a detail brush, which is more of like a number two, one, zero brush like this, very small, right? And it's a round brush as well. Okay, so now that you have your brushes, you have your paints. So if you do a palette, I told you to have like a mix of colors. So my palette here is just a whole mix of different colors. I have some space for mixing. Uh, make sure that you have a little space for mixing. Um, if you don't, then you could always use, sometimes I've used like wax paper. Like if you don't have a special surface for it, you could use, um, even I've used watercolor paper, honestly, to mix paint if I don't have a good surface. So there's a lot of different things. You can use a plate. Like if you have a ceramic plate or something, I've used that before and that works really well. Okay. So just have like a bunch of different colors. We're gonna be using reds, greens, yellows, uh, things that I mentioned in the materials list. You want a paper towel. Paper towel is really good for not only setting your brush on when you don't need it and absorbing water, but also like if, if you want to lift color out and this will make sense as we go, you use it to lift to create a lighter tone in your painting or say you put too much color or too much water, you use, that to lift it out of your painting and kind of like you can redo certain things. A lot of people think with watercolor, once you put it down, that's it, and one and done, but you can actually fix a lot of things. Okay, so you have your water cup. 
I have mine over here, the paper towel, paint brushes, your card. And I also have a pencil. And I use that because for this particular card, we're gonna create more of like a wreath, right? So what I like to do is create an oval, a very light sketch of an oval on the sheet. So that way I have something as a guide to work around and it's not super dark. So you want it really, really light. So I'm gonna just, and you don't want it right at the top because you want room to create your flowers and things like that. So I'm gonna give it a little space, start probably right around here, okay? It doesn't have to be exact, doesn't have to be a perfect oval, it's just a guide, like I said. For me, I'm really, really not a perfectionist, so um, you'll probably see like a lot of wonky <laughs> oval making from me. It's really light, you can barely see it, that's how light it is on here. So you're just making kind of like an oval frame. Okay, so that's just for you to use as a guide as you create your card. So we can reference back to the card itself, right? Okay, so what I like to do when I'm creating a wreath like this, the first thing that I do is I start with my largest item, like, or the one that pops the most, the most important, I feel like are these red flowers here, right? And then I go into more of the net, like the smaller elements. So I go into the berries and then I'll go into like these smaller little flowers down here. And then the last thing I do before I do words, because the words are the very last thing, um, is add in the greenery because it really ties everything together. So keep that in mind as you make cards um, or if you can continue to create like another card after this, um, start it with your larger, more prominent kind of showpiece item, which are probably these red flowers to the berries, to the smaller flowers, and then to your greenery, okay? So everything else is freehand. I don't trace anything else. If you want, you know, of course you can draw it out if that's something that you wanna do on your own. Um, for the sake of time again, I we can't just draw everything out and then paint it. So I'm starting with my number four brush. And we're gonna do the red flowers. So I'm, again, pick the hue or the tone, the color that is closest to what I'm doing. Or if you decide that, hey, instead of a red flower, I want a blue flower or something, you go for that because honestly, it could be any kind of color that you want. Um, the only thing is when you're tying everything together, you want the different parts to kind of pop out. So if you do end up going with say like blue, then keep that in mind for the other colors around it. It'll be a much cooler palette because you'll have a blue here. You'll have like uh, more of, you'll have an orangey berry, but it'll be overall more of a cool palette. So, and again, all that color stuff, I talk about that in my book, so. Let's get started with the red. So this is more of like a jewel red. And notice how I'm just really getting in those bristles, right? Then I take it to the mixing palette. I'm not dainty with this at all. A lot of people are very afraid of color. So what they do is they use the tip of their brush a lot just to paint. But if you think about it, if you're not getting all of that color in the brush, then you're not utilizing your full brush with the flow to create that nice watercolor look. Otherwise, it'll get really patchy and you'll create really thin lines. You want to create volume and just nice, beautiful florals. So what I'm gonna do to start is, I'm gonna start with the flower over here. Okay, so it's not at the top, but I'd say it's more closer to the middle on the right side. And for the sake of teaching, what we're gonna do is create an open circle. So I have a scrap piece over here. It's always nice to have a scrap piece of paper just so that you can test colors or technique. So when I mean open circle, is something like this, right? So I use that when I'm, teaching, and I think it's helpful for you guys as a guide so that you know how, what to work around as you're creating the petals. As you get better, you don't need to create an open circle. You can just create the petals around, say, like an invisible circle. 
if that makes sense. So, but as you're learning, it's good to have that guide. Okay, so I'm gonna get more to the middle here on my right side. And let's see, I'm gonna create it like that. See that right there? Nice, okay. So while it's still wet, I'm gonna just start creating petals. So for the petals, you wanna create volume in your petals like I was saying before. So what's really important is that you're utilizing the, the full width of your brush when you need it. So what that means is instead of creating lines like this where you're just using the tip, if you're to create a flower like this, this is what you would create, right? So not very cute, um, really squiggly lines. Instead, you wanna have a little bit more control and create some volume. So think of this in your head, point, press, pull, and then slowly lift. Okay, so that's much prettier than something like that, right? And you're pressing because you want to create a volume in that petal. So it has a nice, has like, a, you want a different and variation within the petal. So what that means is it's smaller up here, it's a little bit wider here, and then it tapers off as you get to the middle. The reason it tapers off towards the middle is because if you don't, you're gonna get something where it's very crowded and bulky. We want our petals to stay nice and light and airy. And by doing that, as we're approaching the middle, we wanna thin out that petal a little bit. And that just means then lifting your brush up as you're approaching it. So I'm getting that volume, pushing down, and then slowly lifting, right? Okay, so do this a couple times because this is gonna be the foundation of a lot of our, of our petals, of our leaves. Think point, press, pull, and lift. And what I like to do is actually add two together to create a wider one if I need to. So I curve, one, stay off to the right a little bit like that. And then on the left, I combine it together by doing the same thing. And you're just creating a larger, a larger width with a brush that maybe on its own can't create something that wide. I do this all the time to create petals. I combine two of these brush strokes together. So you can create all variations. There's so many types, we can't go through them all, but that is just the foundation. Okay, so now that you have that, let's go back to our points there. Loading our brush up, because that's important. And then I'm gonna start just by, for so when I'm painting on the top, I'm gonna paint out to inwards. Um, and whatever's more comfortable for you, you do that. But as you're going around the flower, you're gonna to have to change. So some of the times, so when I'm at the bottom, I go from in to out. You don't wanna be rotating your paper. That's not a good way to learn. You have to just figure out the best way with your brush as you go. If you start from the outwards and go inwards or opposite of that. So that's a good thing to practice. Okay, so I'm gonna do a few larger ones like this around. And I like to do them a little bit different sizes. So like they're not all the same. And I'm leaving gaps because I'm gonna go in and fill them. Okay, so it's pretty gappy right now, right? So what I'm gonna do is load my brush back up and I'm going to fill it. But to create petals that are looking like they're from behind when you're using the same color, you have to leave a thin white space between it and the flower petal that you're making behind it. Otherwise, it'll become one petal. Okay, so I'm starting from the back here. And you want it to be usually a little bit darker. So I have a little bit more pigment coming inwards. And then as I'm getting really close to this petal, I'm leaving a thin white space. If you're not sure how much, leaving more space than not is better. And as you learn, you can get even thinner. So you notice that how it's 
there's like a thin white space right there. You want to do that throughout as you're creating those backward petals or the petals that are receding. Like I said, just load up that brush, get like a darker pigment in there. And as we're creating it, we'll just have to add petals as we see fit to really balance out the flower. So sometimes you put a petal somewhere and you're like, oh, that doesn't look very good. That's okay. We can add more somewhere else to balance it out. Sometimes they can be really hugging. Sometimes they don't have to be. They can be sticking out more straight but still leave that white gap. Okay. So you wanna look for, like I said, balance. I like it kind of how it is now, only because it is on an edge here and I don't wanna make it too big so I have room for my words, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in using my smaller brush and grab some darker blue, more of like an indigo. And I'm gonna use a little less water if my, because what happens is you're layering colors, you wanna, if it's still wet, the bottom layer, you're using less water for the second layer because it gives you more control on how much that color will bleed. So like if you put a lot of water on the second layer and the first layer already is pretty wet, things will move a lot. And sometimes you don't want that. So this will give you better control. The amount of water that you use will determine how much it moves on your surface. So because I just want this as a detail for the middle, I'm creating little blue dots, but leaving some of that white gap in the middle, you never wanna fully cover up the white because what will what that, what that will do is flatten it. You want a little bit of that white for highlight, okay? So we're just gonna do that a few more times with the red. So we're gonna make a couple more red flowers. I'm gonna make one up here. So again, I'm going to create an open circle. This time mine, because there's such a gap right here, I'm gonna create my circle on the outside of the oval because I have so much space up there. Okay, so doing the same thing, create some larger petals going around, try to make them a little bit different. Right? And then change the positioning of painting, you know, for in to out or out to in, depending on where you are along the circle. That will take some practice. So don't worry if that's a little tough. Okay, so I'm loading my brush up with a lot of the, the red, just so I get that deeper color. And I'm gonna start creating my back petals. Okay. Again, leaving a little bit of white space in certain areas. We're just trying to find a balance. And this really helps fill the flower so it's not so gappy, right? And it gives it dimension with like the darker, shade in the back. Okay. So then I'm gonna go back in with my blue. Create my little dots, leaving white space in the middle a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna lift this a little bit. There. Okay, so we're going to continue with our third flower. 
at the bottom, like down here more, okay. And if you find like your placement's a little bit different, we're all gonna have a slightly different card. And that's okay, because we want our cards to be a little bit different, just the same idea. Okay, so go in, create your larger petals. Remember the pressure that you put down on your brush will determine the width that you get, the outcome of like the width here. So if you're not putting any pressure, you're gonna get like a straight line. And it'll feel weird, weird at first because I've taught a lot of students and once I actually push the brush down on the paper, they're like, oh wait, you have to push that much. So maybe think about that as you're doing it. Okay. So now I'm gonna again, load my brush up and fill in some of these gaps, leaving the small white sliver in between. So just do it as you see works and helps balance out your flower. Like I said, we're all going to have different ones. So where I put something might look a little bit different than yours. Just want it to look balanced. Okay. So lastly, just take your indigo with your small brush and again, fill that middle area, leaving some white space so it doesn't flatten completely. Okay. Awesome. So we have our main flower. Now what we're going to do is move on to our berries. So I'm going to clean my brush out and then I'm going to use more of kind of a yellow orange. If you don't have a yellow orange, uh, you can use, you can mix a little yellow with a tiny bit of red, like tiny bit, and you can create kind of a more yellow orange, or you could do just a yellow berry um, if you want. Okay, so I load my brush up. Okay, for the berries, I'm going to put a grouping here. So I have three groupings of three. So I'm going to start up here. And what I do is I create a circle like this, pretty wide, right? But then I have this white middle. I don't close it up completely. I like to keep a small sliver for highlight. So it's like creating a circle that's not perfect because you want it to be a little bit wonky, more organic looking. Okay, so I'm gonna create my second one, like it's hugging it. So again, kind of pulling it out like this, leaving white space. So I'm gonna hug it, but leave a thin space of white like that. And then fill in some or most of it, but leaving a little bit of a white gap for highlight. And then the last one I do is gonna be coming underneath a little bit like that. So kind of like a rainbow move, right? It's like a half circle a little bit. And then hugging it, leaving a little bit of a white gap there. And then filling most of it, but leaving a little white highlight. Okay, so we're gonna do that two more times. Load your brush up if you need to. If you feel like your color is really dark, take a piece of your paper towel. You can lift some of it out if you want while it's still wet. Okay, so we'll do the second grouping right here. Let's go down a little bit more. Okay, so I'm gonna do my full circle like that and then fill it mostly, but leaving a small sliver, right? Okay. And then I'm gonna have two hugging below like I did before, like that. And then another one, hugging it below here.
Awesome. And again, these circles are not perfect. They don't need to be perfect. You don't want them perfect. And then I'm gonna do another one down here. So I'm gonna do a larger one right here. And then fill most of it, leaving a tiny sliver for highlight. And then I'm gonna create another one up here, hugging. Remember to leave a tiny white line in between, just for that tiny bit of separation, helps it just stay separate and defined. And then the last one I'm gonna do right here. So don't think too much about it. It really should be like pretty smooth process. Okay, so now we have our berries. Okay, so next what we wanna move on to is our smaller blue flowers. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I have this light blue color. If you don't have a light blue, but you have more of like an indigo, just use more water and you can create a lighter blue. So for example, I'm going to be using a color like this. And it's basically out of the tube, really similar to that. But if you have a color out of the tube that's more like this, right, really dark, what you want to do is add a good amount of water to it and you can get a lighter color like that. Okay. And if you have your smaller brush, I suggest using that for detailing like this because they're smaller flowers. So with these flowers, they're really packed together. So how I create them are really just bunching little petals like, like this, like little flowers that you're creating in groups of four petals. And I'm not thinking too much. Like I'm just one, two, three, four, leaving a, a, white, or a white space in between for the middle that we're gonna put a small dot of indigo in. It's so loose loosely painted. So also what you want to do is you want to add more water to certain ones. That way it's a little bit lighter. As you can see in the painting here, you have some darker ones and then you have some lighter ones, right? The lighter ones are because I use a little bit more water and I just like that variation. Another way you could do it is you do more of the darker color and then while it's still wet, use your paper towel and lift out like half of it. And I'll show you as I go. Okay, so I'm loading up my brush. And let's see, let's start up here. And I'm just gonna start creating some smaller flowers. Really loose, right? So it's kind of like you're just filling spaces with tiny brush strokes that look similar to flowers. These are like, I call them filler flowers. They fill the space, but still are very cute. And say I want this one to be a little bit lighter. I go in with my paper towel while it's still wet and I lift it out so it becomes much more faint. And you can do that throughout so you have a variation. It just helps kind of create more depth as you're painting. Okay. Let's see, lifting out a little there. Okay, so let me just move on to another spot. Like how about down here? Sometimes they're half flowers that are hugging like that. And then other times they're more full flowers where they have like the full four petals. But like I said, they're so loose that everything like kind of meshes together. Okay, I'll lift some of that one out so it's lighter. It just really helps create dimension when you do that. And we can add in more if we need to. 
um, as we're filling the space or adding greenery if we need. And then we're gonna do another one, hugging these berries here. So again, these are very quick movements. Don't spend too much time on them. They're really just about filling space. Have them hugging these berries a little bit. Kind of lift out the color if you want. And when I go back and add like the little middles to the centers, um, that'll help define them a little bit better as well. Okay. So let's move on to the ones up here on the other berries. Lifting some color out. And then also to get lighter tones, like I said, you can add more water to it if you need to. You don't always have to lift out. I find lifting out is a little bit easier as I'm going quicker. Okay. Just gonna be hugging this flower a little bit more. Pull it in. And then I'm gonna have a few more just in this area on the upper left poinsettia. Okay, and like I said, we can add more or less as we see fit when we're finishing up. So next one you wanna do is I'm going to go in and grab my number four brush because I'll come back and add the middles after, but I wanna start the greenery. So I start with the larger leaves or, um, so for example, like I'm gonna start by painting the leaves of the red flowers. So what I wanna do is I want more of a, like a cooler green. So I'm gonna grab like more of a Viridian, like Windsor Newton has like a really nice Viridian green. So that's a cooler green. I'm just loading my brush. Okay, and if you need to see what that looks like on paper, it looks something like that. Okay. And like an evergreen green, like forest green a little bit. Okay, so with these ones, I'm using the same technique that I made the petals of the larger ones where I'm doing point press, pull lift. Um, so kind of just, we're filling in gap areas. They're kind of like guides to us. So like down here, I have a guide, an opening. So that's a good place to put a leaf. I'm gonna pull it down and out like that. If it hits the other things that are around it, that's fine. Don't worry about that. Again, yours is gonna be a little bit different than mine. So you just place them where you have those nice openings. I have an opening right here. There's a blue flower there, but that's okay. I'm gonna paint over it and kind of around it a little bit like that. Load your brush up as you need, because you want it to stay that nice vibrant green color. Okay. And then we'll have a nice one coming out of here, like that. And I think I want maybe a smaller one just kind of coming out of here. Okay. 
like I said, you can just keep going, but may, remember we're gonna add more greenery and different colors for the other plants. So don't get too carried away. Okay, so next I'm gonna add it for this one here, the greenery, same color. I'm gonna add it kind of coming down, filling that space where it gets close the blue. Okay. There's a nice gapped area there. And maybe a little one up here. Okay. Now I'm going to fill my brush again and do some down here on this last big one. Okay, so again, just using those spaces as guides, push down on your brush to get a nice width for some wider petals. Depending on what direction you're going in, you'll start from in to out or out to in. But remember to taper off as you're coming towards the flower so that you get a thinner line. So that means just lift your brush up more as you're getting closer to the flower and it'll thin out so it doesn't get bulky. It stays nice and whimsical and light. Okay, then we have a few more areas here. Nice. Okay. So now what I wanna do is I'm going to grab, actually, while I still have this color, if you have your smaller brush, it might be easier for you to create more fern like hmm, a little kind of bigger. Okay, let's just do it with the number four because we already have it filled with our meridian. I'm gonna create some more fern like leaves off of the berries here. So I'm gonna create a longer stem, right? And then I'm just gonna create thinner, thinner petals. So these ones are gonna be more kind of lines, but you still have a little bit more of width to them than just like a straight line. And they're more gapped because they're fern-like and you want them to be, to see the individual little leaves on them, right? So you want to do that. So some of these, think of like a lighter hand, more, um, more leaves, more gaps a little bit, just so that you see the definition. These other ones that we just did are just like more rich, bulky, but there's less of them. I'm gonna fit one right in here. Okay. Then I'm gonna take that down here and do the same thing, create kind of a longer line. And then on one side, just create some curves, some leaves off of it to create more of a fern. Remember to curve your lines because that's really important, especially in things that are organic because you don't want like angles and sharp lines. It'll look too geometric. So if you ever see like an elbow or something, try to round it out because it'll look really awkward and doesn't really belong in nature so much. Okay. And then we're gonna do that one more down here. Okay. And if you want a bigger leaf at the end, you can create your long line and then push down and create a longer leaf if you want off of it. So if you want to fill more space. 
So if you're like thinking, oh, I need to fill a lot of space, but I don't want to create as many leaves, then you could always do something like that. Okay, now what I want to do is with a more, I want to say like natural green. Um, I'm going to use this Windsor Newton, it's called Hooker's Green. It's kind of like more of a natural green. I'm going to create some more like larger leaves that are rounded that you can see here, like these ones here. Create some of those, okay? Just to kind of fill the rest of my space. Okay, so what I usually do is create the long line first or whatever, however long I want my line to be. And then I create one side of the leaf and close it off, leaving a gap for the other side. And you don't always have to like create really, really long lines. Um, kind of just depends on how much space you have. We don't have a ton of space here, so I'm doing a lot of overlapping. So if you don't really have room for these, you don't have to add them or add them much tinier than I am. Okay, let's add, I'm gonna add some over here. Kind of going through like that. Got a really, the, what I love about this is that you can play around the greenery is like really filler. So like, it doesn't have to be exact. It's really just to kind of fill your space up where you need a little bit more balance. Okay. And then lastly, I want to put some over here. Of course, when you're doing this on your own, as you're learning, you can take more time with it but I'm just going a little quicker for the sake of time for us together. Okay, now what I wanna do is I'm gonna use the same color to kind of go fill any areas that I feel like need a little bit more filling and this will just give it a good contrast of green. And I can always, if I want it to be a little bit lighter, I'm always lift it out. So if you see random gaps that you feel like just need to be filled with a little bit of greenery, just go in. I like to do it in some of these blue ones. I like to do that to give it a little bit more green to the blue flowers. Yeah. And Nice, I think I'm gonna add a little bit down here just to fill some of that space. Okay, you just want to be a little bit more balanced and it doesn't have to be perfect because this is art and there's no perfection. So the last thing I wanna do is add those tiny middle dots to the middle of those small blue flowers. So I'm loading up my small detail brush with that darker blue indigo, and I'm just gonna go in and create dots, just small dots throughout, just to give it a little bit more definition. You may not even know where the center is, so just you can make random dots if you want. Don't make too many. It's just to kind of imply that this is a flower somewhere in this, wild field of blue flowers. Okay. Awesome. Okay, last what you want to do, and this is totally up to you. You can write something in the middle. You can write, you know, you can leave it. You can put like a name, a date, whatever you want. So I'm going to leave that up to you. But what I usually do as suggestion, so say like for me, we write, very merry wishes, or if you want to write uh, joy or something, we can do 
with the pencil, I suggest always doing it first. And for me, I'm gonna just do joy. So I'm just gonna write out joy in the middle here, lightly with a pencil. And using my small brush, my number two, pick whatever color you want. I suggest more of a green um, or a blue because you don't want it too bright to take away from your flowers. And you wanna use a lot less water when you're doing lettering. You just want it to flow. So have enough water for the brush to flow, but you don't want a ton of it because you wanna have more control because you're doing lettering. So because I'm left-handed, I start on from right to left when I letter, but it won't matter. So if you're right-handed, you can do it the opposite way. Um, I do this because I smear, so. Kind of just go around your, what you sketched with your pencil. Awesome, and you can even get fancy if you want to curve this one in. <laughs> okay, there you go. So you can utilize all these techniques to create multiple flower cards or whatever you want. Um, like for example, here's another one. We use mostly just reds, red berries. It's very similar to this one, just a more uh, red and green palette. And I think that's it. Now we're going into questions. Rachel, that was amazing. Your, your instruction is on point. Thank you. I definitely made some notes about pushing and lifting the brush. That's awesome. where I've been going wrong my whole life. <laughs> awesome. Um, so I've been answering questions in the chat. Okay. Um, we've had some people who had to head out early, but as I mentioned, we will be emailing over the recording of this video to everybody who registered and it's going to be up on our YouTube channel as well. Um, Rachel, I wanted to just thank you so much for joining us and giving us all this uh, tutelage and mm -hmm. ask if you wanna add anything or do you have any events coming up that maybe we could join another one of these videos or find you in, in, in person somewhere? Yeah, so I will be, my plan is to do my signing um, in Phoenix at Changing Hands on December 3rd for the book. And I'm releasing a new collection um, on sat this Saturday. So if you're on my email list, you can definitely will get first look. If not, just go to my website and you can join my newsletter. Um, and in there I'll have a lot of different kind of teaching elements, but also like a lot of gifting items, which will be really fun. Um, other than that, just, yeah, if you, you get your book, please leave reviews. It's so helpful for us. Um, and just tells us that, you know, we did good and helps us <laughs> do better next time if we want. So I appreciate you guys all being here and I hope you had fun. Yeah, and anybody who painted along today, or if you paint using this video, please upload those and tag Rachel at Pink Puddle Studio and you can tag Rocky Nook. We'd love to see your cards, even your uh, test piece of paper, all the progress, it's, it's wonderful, so. Yes, awesome, perfect. Okay, thank you so much for signing off today. Have a good day. Thank you everybody who joined us. Thank you guys. <laughs>